Today we've got with us Carolyn Jones. She is the author of an award-winning book that every nurse probably knows about. How did you get involved with creating the American Nurse? I had breast cancer a number of years ago, and a nurse got me through that whole process by just making me feel really normal at a time in my life when I didn't feel normal at all. And I was always curious about how she, what path she took to become who she became. I was so impressed with her. Her name was Joanne, still is, Joanne Staha. And so a few years after that, I was approached about making a book that would celebrate nurses. And I left at the opportunity because I wanted to do something. I'd wanted to thank Joanne. I had never really thanked her for getting me through what she did. And this seemed like a perfect opportunity. Plus, it gave me a chance to dig into a world and find out what are nurses made of? How do, they, how do they become nurses? Are you born a nurse? Are these skills that are developed? Are they just encouraged with the work that you do? So I was really curious about what the qualities are that make up great nurses. So I started the journey of the American nurse. So good to know how that came about and to know if this was a project from the heart. I've interviewed and photographed people my whole career and I, I hadn't really found a whole profession that I could sort of embrace in this way and find so much depth. I, I, I got really interested in seeing things through the lens of a nurse because it became evident really quickly to me that nurses have a unique way of looking at the world and looking at all of us and understanding who we are and how we react to things and what makes us better and what makes us not well, and and I wanted to look at the issues in our country through the lens of nurses, and so that was what my journey became. So this was a big journey in more ways than one. Yeah. Um, how many miles did you travel? Oh my goodness, how many miles did we travel doing the American Nurse? Well, I remember we got out a great big map right in the beginning, and I said, well, if I'm going to do a project about nurses, I want to call it the American nurse, because I want to really dig in on issues in our country and see how nurses are dealing with them. So I had this big map on my wall, and we started putting red dots on the map when we would locate where an issue was that I wanted to explore. So like, for instance, the most elderly in the entire country are in Florida, so Florida gets a red dot. Um, more returning war veterans were coming back to San Diego than any other place in the country. So there was a VA hospital in San Diego. They got a red dot. I wanted to look at what it was like to go through Hurricane Katrina. So what, it, what do nurses have to deal with when there's some kind of catastrophe like that? And they have really hard choices to make. So they got a red dot. So by the time I was working on the project, I had all these red dots like in the south in the middle on the north part of the country and we zigzagged across the country for a good year filming and interviewing all of the nurses so we at least crossed the country twice three times maybe so i'd say we probably did a good i'd say eight or nine thousand miles easily mm. yeah i would say connecting all those red dots yeah zigzagging that is so interesting um i know that you've had countless number of stories that you could have written about, you know, and to select the ones that you did. Does one stand out really as the most inspirational? I think the hardest question I'm asked is, what's your favorite story? Or what's the one that touched you the deepest? Or what's the most inspirational story in the book? Because every day and every nurse that I met, that was my favorite one. And I'm a kind of person that if I'm interviewing someone and I'm photographing them, uh, I fall just a little bit in love with every single person. And you have to understand that when I, so the way we set this up, if I was going to a part of the country where there were more returning war veterans coming back than any other place, we would go to that hospital and ask them to nominate the best nurses that they have that could speak to the issue I wanted to address, but also really well represent the profession. So I was meeting incredible nurses that had been nominated, you know, like, like narrowed down from hundreds and hundreds of nurses to just a couple nurses that would represent a whole facility in a whole part of the country. So this was a special group of people. And 
I, meeting over a hundred for the book was one thing, um, but then I had to select five for the film, which was a whole different challenge. So I have to say that as much as all of them hit me on so many different levels, the five that I selected for the book were the ones that got so under my skin that I couldn't possibly not have them in the film. And, and out of those five, and it depends on what day you get me, because um, it changes, it, it really does. But today, right now, my I guess the most inspirational nurse that I met and the, and the most powerful story was Sister Stephen, who I met who was running Villa Loretto, a nursing home in Wisconsin. And when I started the project, we wanted to kind of tip our hat to nuns because that was the origin of nursing and it seemed very appropriate to have a nun in the book. Um, I wasn't so sure how I was going to do with the nun. I didn't know if it was going to be really kind of serious and uptight or if it was going to be kind of okay. So I was delighted to learn that Sister Stephen was a funny nun. I mean, she just had funny stories and she was open and wonderful. And I kind of fell in love with her a little bit when we got out there. And then she's in the middle of Wisconsin and most of her um, patients are from that area and they all had farms and animals and she adopts all these animals and she brings them in. And every spring, all the animals have babies and she uses the baby's animals, the baby animals as animal therapy for the residents who live at Villa Loretto. And so you've got this like unbelievably smart scenario where the nursing home is filled with families and kids and grandchildren because who wouldn't want to go see baby animals, right? And you can hold the goats and hold the ducks. And... But she taught me about the whole cycle of life and got me very focused on better ways that we can leave this earth and got me just starting on this journey of what end of life looks like in the country. So that was probably, I was probably most inspired by her if I had to choose one today. What would you say did your, your view of nursing and nurses, did it change? The journey of creating the American nurse started with no understanding of who nurses are and what they do. Uh, even having a great nurse, which as much as I learned from Joanne, uh, I thought I knew a little bit, I knew nothing. And, and I, I guess because I think of myself as a photojournalist, really interested in sharing stories with the public, I always put myself in the public's position. So you could go through a whole illness like I had and still not fully understand who nurses are and what they do. So as soon as I started my journey, I, 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 I started it off with, you know, they make you feel better, they take your temperature, they take your blood pressure. Um, I don't know, can they give you advice to live better maybe, but I didn't know, I had no idea the extent of the education. I had no idea how well they understand how we tick. And this whole kind of holistic way of looking at us as human beings, I didn't understand. So I wanted to understand that. I think that I immediately saw that there were qualities I'm really interested in promoting. There are qualities that nurses have, not just because of who they are as people, but also because of the work that they do every day. This idea of being non-judgmental, for instance, you have to care for everybody. Um, that feels so obvious to probably every single nurse, but it's not obvious. And I think about it a lot right now at this stage, uh, the, the state that our country's in. The, the ability to be able to care for one another, no matter who you are and what you've done, and to get beyond whatever that is and look at everybody as though they're someone's child that deserves to be cared for. Um, that's one of the traits that I was completely enchanted by from the get-go. And then it seems like as I dug in deeper and I was exploring different kinds of nurses in different parts of the country, whether they were home health nurses or helicopter nurses collecting bodies off of farmland accidents and all these different places that I went to and saw so many different kinds of nursing. And I realized that they have a unique understanding of the country and how everything, poverty, the prison system, 
aging, war, how all of these different issues affect us physically and emotionally, and how our families are affected, and how it makes our communities work together. So now I was off on a whole tangent because I just felt like I'd opened up this kind of treasure chest of really valuable information that the American public isn't familiar with but could really use, and, and it would be great to access that. So I went from kind of zero to 60, didn't understand anything about nurses. I'm still not a nurse, although if, if I am ever reincarnated, I do think I'll come back as a nurse because I think that's what I would want to do. But right now, I'm really content telling everybody what nurses do. I think that's kind of what I was put here for. And it was just like your eyes were open even more as you went from state to state to state and see these nurses and, wow, a nurse does that, a nurse does this. Um, it's not just a nurse. You know, yeah. Wow. You're a nurse. <laughs> yeah, and always with this enormous dignity for the patient. No matter where I was following a nurse, it could have been, you know, kind of walking into a really run-down cabin in the Appalachian Mountains that, you know, you could hardly breathe walking through the door, and the nurse just kind of walks in and takes it all in stride and clears off a spot and makes a sterile area and, you know, does their thing. And I just, there's just, that raises everybody up. You know, that raises up the patient and, and it makes those of us watching this kind of realizing that respecting our fellow human beings is, is uh, important and doable and that we need to function that way. So I think I'm excited about doing work that, um, shows nurses in action that way. Yes. So that we can learn from that. To, the, to a nurse, everybody is entitled to that respect. There are very few professions that actually honor that. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you really, because people say things, but I mean, I've, I've, six years I've been talking to nurses and following them and watching, and you know, when you have a camera in a room, you see things, you see how, the dance of humanity a bit. And, you know, the nurses really mean that. They really are non judgmental. And it is, it's a remarkable thing. They try to be. But nurses are human too. Yeah, I'm they not. And, they're, and, you know, <laughs> you, we, we put all the nurses right. in this big bucket. You know, I, I have been fortunate to spend the last six years with some of the finest nurses in this country. So I, I know that. Um, but I'm, I'm all about recording excellence. So um, I'm very focused on showing the best of nursing. That's what I want to learn from. That's what I want to surround myself by. I mean, I was thinking about this morning's um, keynote address, and the young man said, you know, get five people in your life that you really admire and want to be like. And th that's who you will be. You will become, you, you will have those traits. You will adopt those traits of the five people that are closest to you. And I think that's why I, I want to hang out with nurses so much because the nurses that I've met have these traits that I would love to embody. So um, I know all nurses aren't perfect, and I know all nurses don't have all of these traits, and the nurses go into nursing for a hundred different reasons. But I haven't really seen such a high percentage of quality people that care a lot about what they do than I have in nursing. To come from a, a non-nurse, that just makes it so much more special because you want, wanted to know nursing. Yeah, I also wanted to kind of understand Kind of who's the best of humanity? How can we be the best that we can be? And and I think that's what I got to witness. So. And that's pretty special. That's that's a bonus for me. Yeah, that had to touch you. It changes you. It's transformative. It this whole project has been transformative for me in a good way. Absolutely. I think I'm a little bit kinder. Well, thank you so much. You're for welcome. Coming. Thank you. Talk to us and. Uh, share your story, and it was my honor to have you. Oh, well, thank you. you. Can I tell you about the, the, what I'm working on right now? Yes. Do you have two more minutes? Oh, yes, please. I would love to tell you this. Yes. So, tell us. Um, so one of the nurses early on in, in, when I was working on the American nurse, 
uh, was at a hospice in Florida, and she said she looked at me at one point and she said, "Americans think that death is optional," and that comment really stuck with me. And as I spoke to nurses about what they cared about and what mattered across the country, so often it was about the fact that we're not dying very well. And so I, I've spent the last two years focused on end of life and nurses dealing with patients that were making choices when they were faced with life-threatening illnesses, which is why it was so meaningful for me to be at this conference, Critical Care Nurses, because they're on the front lines of this. And I think with technology developing as quickly as it is, our choices are just so complicated and it's going to get very, very difficult. So. I'm so proud of this project, and it's uh, and we've just finished the film, and it's called Defining Hope, and uh, and it follows um, a home a home health nurse and a nurse at Calvary Hospital, which is a hospice and hospital, and a nurse and a, a palliative care nurse at Children's National in Washington D.C. And I was privileged to get to see the nurses and the patients make these choices that we will all, if we're lucky, get to make. And, um, and it was, it's just been a really powerful journey. So um, uh, it's kind of the next chapter of the American nurse. And I'm very proud the of it. The American nurse continues. It does, <laughs> it does, apparently. Yeah, oh, I can't wait to, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, thank you, yeah, I'm excited about it.